Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, August 16th. Tesla has been spotted shipping Cybertrucks by the truckload, well, at least two truckloads, and a few of these vehicles appear to be destined for crash testing. The TikTok user that posted it said that his dad spotted the trucks, but couldn't say where. A little later, another truck was spotted with two Cybertrucks in Lenoke, Arkansas. One of the trucks had some markings that would indicate that either it was in a crash test or was intended to be used in a crash test. The trucks could be on their way up north towards Michigan, where there are many crash testing facilities. Cybertruck is currently going through its final validation testing for an imminent launch. Tesla has launched a product called the Tesla Universal Wall Connector. The charger is aimed at non-Tesla EV buyers in North America, and it looks pretty good. It actually just looks like a regular Tesla wall connector, but it does have the Magic Dock, which has an adapter integrated for J1772 plugs. Otherwise, it has all the same specs as Tesla's regular home charging solution, and at $595, it's also not that much more expensive than other chargers, which is quite competitive. Tesla says that deliveries are starting in October, and at Electrek, we anticipate pressure for other home unit manufacturers as a result. The move to the NACS connector has already given Tesla a giant advantage since its home charging solutions are already much cheaper than competitors. But those competitors at least had a few years to adapt before other automakers like Ford and GM fully adopt it on their vehicle programs. But now, this is becoming a much more attractive solution for non-Tesla buyers as they are future-proofing their charging solution. The new entry-level electric Mercedes was spotted testing ahead of its world debut coming next month. From what the images show, the new CLA-sized EV draws inspiration from the gas-powered CLA model. Unlike other test cars that have been spotted, this one features pop-out door handles. It also has a closed-off grille, a smaller lip spoiler, and as far as we can tell through the camouflage, distinct character lines. Now, the new electric model is designed to boost profit margins rather than focusing on volume, despite its designation as an entry-level vehicle. Mercedes will preview its next-generation EV models at the upcoming IAA Mobility in Munich starting September 5th. Vietnamese EV maker VinFast celebrated its listing on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange under the ticker VFS. During its market debut, VinFast market cap easily surpassed Ford and General Motors, ending the day with an almost combined total of both. Now, VinFast shares began trading at around $22.00, which is more than double the $10 set stock price. Although it climbed up to $37, it's since settled, we'll say, at $29 per share, but it is still very new for this automaker being a day old on the stock exchange. Now, since shipping its first batch of VF8 electric vehicles to the U.S. in November, and according to recent estimates from Kelly Blue Book, they did $850 in sales, well, VinFast is also working to repair their reputation after that first model was met with largely negative reviews. Now, it has been normal for recent electric car companies that go public to soar in value and then drop back down shortly thereafter. It would take some amazing news for VinFast to maintain their current momentum a day later, and we will keep an eye out for if and when that comes. New York City has announced that it will require rideshare fleets to be all-electric by 2030 which is the first large city in the world to do so. There is a build-up to this requirement, scaling in intensity year by year. The big companies really won't mind all that much because Uber and Lyft already have committed to going electric by 2030 anyway. There's also other lines being drawn, some of them less solid. New York state regulation dictates that all new passenger cars, pickups, and SUVs sold in the state must be zero emissions by 2035. Also, existing federal and state incentives are expected to encourage EV purchases and drive the market towards price parity somewhere around 2027. So with those other mandates on the horizon, this particular announcement may not have too much of an impact. The market and other deadlines will likely be doing the heavy lifting. Let's take a look at today's battery breakthrough sweepstakes news. General Motors is the lead investor of a $60 million Series B funding round supporting the Silicon Valley-based battery company called Mitrachem. Now, Mitrachem will assist General Motors in developing iron-based cathode active materials, including lithium manganese iron phosphate cells. This will be in addition to lithium iron phosphate cells already prominent in the industry. 
The battery company is confident that it can bring these new chemistries not just from the lab, but to production. Now, MitraChem says that they can significantly shorten learning cycles and bring new battery cell formulas to market, such as lithium metal halide for solid state cells. So good luck to you, fellas. In what is being called a world first, the battery giant, CATL, has revealed its new Shenxing Super Fast Charging Battery. CATL says its new fast charging lithium iron phosphate battery is capable of adding 248 miles of range within a 10 minute charge window. CATL claims that its new innovation is the world's first battery to support 4C charging. That is the world's first lithium iron phosphate battery to support 4C. Which by the way, 4C is a measurement of the charging multiplier. Most batteries are at 3C right now, with some of them pushing the boundaries, like CATL. In today's community comment found on YouTube, in response to my assertion of Tesla having to surrender data to the Chinese Communist Party, Johnson Johnson 100 says, don't get political. Well, Johnson, I usually keep the political stuff to a pretty small minimum, although regular listeners have likely surmised my general stance. But in the case of data, all Chinese companies have to share whatever data they accumulate with the Chinese Communist Party. And though I don't hear too many people talking about it, there's no way that Tesla is not in this same predicament, even if it is a foreign company. Tesla had to promise that they would keep all data collected locally in China when pressured by the Communist Party. And also Tesla vehicles were banned from military installations on account of cameras on the vehicles. Now it's quite evident that the Chinese Communist Party or CCP is aware of Tesla vehicle capabilities and what they do with all of that data that they will be collecting it was once a humorous source of speculation, because until recently, the CCP very likely could gain nothing from Tesla's data simply because it was so vast and also raw. Tesla itself is building a huge supercomputer that the world has never seen in an attempt to process all of this information. But now with the announcement of Tesla hiring for the full self-driving effort in China and also Chinese data labelers, this extra processing of that data very well could mean that the Communist Party will have a more turnkey group of data in the near future. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. It's not particularly political in terms of like left or right, but more of a global political discussion. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great opinion.